What's up, people? My name is Stav. You're in my living room today. We have a very energetic soul in the building. I am so excited he's here because his work has been some of the coolest I've seen in a really long time. I have a ton of talented friends that do film and photography, but your portraits are next level. My guest today is... Introduce yourself, man. John Nance. John Nance. Wow, that was beautiful. Building. You didn't have to talk so high <laughs> of me. I appreciate that. No, seriously, this guy's work, if you have not seen it, you need to take a look before we dive into this podcast, man. Because as far as film goes, it's so good. And as far as portrait work goes, it's also just insanely good. Can you give us a, a sort of background of of what it is you do. Cool. Uh, well, uh, my name is John, and I'm a 23-year-old photographer from Appleton, Wisconsin. Can I stick to your Oh, yeah, you're good. You? Wherever right, cool. you want to look, yeah. it's fine. so it's more natural. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, like, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My mom was a teacher my whole life. Uh, we came here when I was 16, and then just, like, started to experience the world outside of the inner cities and stuff like that, and don't get me wrong, Milwaukee is beautiful, but also like there's not much resources in bigger cities like, you know, where I come from, For especially sure. the inner city too. Yeah. And uh, I think when I came here, I definitely started to, I was a very observant kid. So I think the camera was just something very natural for me. It's like, especially if you're an observer, you either probably become like a writer or a uh, someone who writes music or a photographer, any, any way that you can capture life and keep it with you. Yeah. Oh, I think, absolutely. um, I think that was definitely my way of thinking and I needed to figure out to do it. I remember it being like 14, uh, we were at like a party and I remember seeing this guy like shoot a camera and watching like everyone kind of cling towards him and then like him kind of like move around the room and like talk to all these different types of people i'm like dude that'd be crazy if you could do that with the world and just capture moments man and like where i'm here now is just literally just talking to you a new being a new person and like being able to just like be around and learn you it's like i think it's the quickest way to learn the world it's the quickest tool to get you around too for sure so like cameras will definitely take you everywhere you know it oh absolutely and you kind of describe yourself as like a, a photo journalist right mm -hmm. and i don't i hope i'm not like fa like false flagging all oh, the journalists yeah. out there please don't hate me uh i didn't go to school for it but i'm a talker and i'm very great at it too i no, i think your work is incredibly authentic i mean as any journalist should be i i don't I, it's it's very raw it's obviously mm. authentic it has so to be. what else is there to journalism mm -hmm. really everyone's honestly a journalist i think people are just either more better at critiquing or not critiquing um they're more better at articulating their stories and some just aren't mm -hmm. and i'm definitely that's like what i'm trying to learn i want to learn how to uh articulate myself well enough where i can start to understand myself more and others and photography has literally did that like tenfold. It's yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's such a cool way to interact with the world and to learn. I mean, you're using it as yes. a tool to gather information mm -hmm. and to learn more. I mm -hmm. mean, you're working on this pretty large project right mm -hmm. now. Can you talk about that a Dude, little bit? It's a, it's, it's a, it's probably like my biggest project so far. It's my second biggest project and it's my first museum gig. So, um, I won't get too into it on how I got it, uh, but there's a lovely lady at the Trout Museum named Valerie, and she kind of like pitched. So basically, it was super weird. We had the same exact idea, but we basically came together on something, and now I'm able to work with this organization to like make it a lot bigger than what it is. So basically, it's called Meet Your Neighbor, and basically what I'm doing is hopping popping around all the fox valley area and literally talking to each and every individual person that has a story to tell i'm not picking specifically i'm literally just talking to people so like how i figured out about you it's the little things like that like hey you should talk to this person they have a very like great soul and you should connect with them. Oop, 
Just say that. <laughs> oh, God <goodness>. damn. <laughs> we got him drinking spotted cows. Yeah, so. <laughs> that, that got to me pretty easy. Um, yeah, but like it's the little things about like meeting people. And it's uh, basically the goal is to highlight businesses, people, uh, organizations around the Fox and like diversify our diversify our museum and like you know bring more eyes to different things yeah and it, nothing's wrong with that it's like okay no. like think about it we're in the fox valley and a lot of people here haven't really experienced a lot of different type of people mm-hmm. so let's say you stayed in a small little town your whole life and you finally come to the city like appleton green bay or like oshkosh because those are the three probably biggest cities in the fox and what i want to do is i want people to see and feel things from other people they have never talked to yeah so cool i, I keep saying so cool but it, it really oh, it's is so cool it's so cool uh because again i i think one of the reasons i love podcasting mm-hmm. is for a very similar reason you know you're connecting with talented individuals Mm -hmm. locally Mm -hmm. and um really diving into what makes them unique and special everyday people everyone everyday people everyone's unique there are so i I feel like there are always those people who think they have to go to like these big cities like Mm -hmm. austin texas or california or it's all here all the talent is here all the the natural people are here and if mm-hmm. you go searching man there are so many people in this area that Dude. have amazing stories to tell and i'm so glad you're capturing mm-hmm. it the way you are man and i think that's the coolest about photography it's like when i was younger i just thought it was cool to have a camera and then take a picture whenever you felt like it mm. but when you start to dive deeper into it you learn the technical parts there's only so much of the technical part that you can learn and then you're just like okay what do i do now right once you understand the tool to its full potential yeah now you got to do something with the tool you can't just sit around with all this knowledge either you either pass it down to someone influence other people or make projects and try to influence other people and i'm pretty sure that's what i want to do with this project and it's going pretty well man all right i'm so excited to see the end result Mm -hmm. i uh, you know, I've only recently stumbled across your work, mm. but everything I've seen up until this mm. point has just been super, super next level. It's like, dude, I should have been, I should have been and met you probably like two years ago. Probably, or something. probably. But it's like, it's wild. We're in such a small circumference, but still we couldn't even like hear about each other, hear right, each other right. until we meet the right people. Yes. And, and it, it's, it's crazy what getting out of your comfort zone can allow too because like i wasn't always comfortable Mm -hmm. hopping in front of a camera and sharing stories but the moment i did Mm -hmm. i was really able to Mm -hmm. connect with some really creative and talented minds Mm -hmm. and it's brought me Mm -hmm. to a much better place just because when you surround yourself Mm -hmm. with those kinds of people it's hard not to be man as creative and as Truth. aspiring as they are facts <laughs> and Big facts. when you talk about film mm-hmm. i mean it film is such uh an art form in itself you know it not everybody i think is mm-hmm. able to mm-hmm. understand and appreciate the work that goes into it's patience yeah a film photo yeah. where where did you learn about um, film okay how can i get into this all right cool so last semester of high school i moved to appleton uh i used to go to oshkosh west i went there for like a couple years after i'm moving from milwaukee and then my mom was a teacher and she had to move around she had to find jobs and appleton was that first place to actually give her like you know a position and she had two children and she had to figure out ways to like take care of us and stuff and i was working but i didn't make enough money to take care of a family sure so, shouts out to moms, you know what I'm saying? Keeping it down. Yeah, big down. dog, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think it really all, like, I think I transitioned, like, I transitioned out of digital in high school when I started to shoot more, like, uh, digital stuff. And there was so much, there was only so much I could really get from a digital image. Mm. 
but yes and, and it's like and it's really coming full circle right now and it's it's a weird story but we'll get to that okay okay so i, I started shooting digital and i'm just like ah this isn't enough there has to be more there has to be like more of an exciting like way to photograph and like be excited about something like when you take an image like i want every image to feel like something and i didn't start to figure it out until moved to appleton and i found a camera shop downtown it was called murray's and there was these two guys in there uh pat the owner and then there was a i mean a guy he had working for him which is alex he's an older guy but and I wouldn't say it as older being bad. Older means more wisdom, which is a great thing. You should always stay connected with your older people. It doesn't Absolutely. matter how old they are. They know uh, a whole lot. Yeah. They really do. So he's kind of like a big brother to me. I never really had like brothers growing up. I've always like, I've been, I was raised by women and stuff like that, yeah. which is an amazing thing, which probably helped me out a lot more growing up, being oh, a, same. a young same black here. kid and just like, just, you know, figuring out the world as a young male. It's not easy for us. We, we definitely have to like you know hone in on like our emotional like being yeah the there are a lot of it. like like stigmas mm -hmm. and 100%. uh yeah yeah different trends to to break because yeah. it, it it really is um something that is passed down generationally I oh mean, yeah dude i was talking with someone about that the other day whole different story but we'll get back to the photography thing <laughs> um yeah so i met my older brother alex I mean, you know, he's just a friend, but I consider this guy an older brother. I don't think without this guy, I don't think any of my work would look how it does now, personally. Uh, he opened a new door for me. I think digital photography was cool. It's amazing. It's a great tool for practicing, exercising your eye. Film is a whole different ballpark. It's literally knowing what to do before it even happens. Pre-visualization, pre that's all it is. You learn how to shape light you know you learn how to work with light you're literally just like you're a light catcher you you move well light. you know how to read yeah. it i mean you really really have to understand yes. you know mm -hmm. how light works and mm -hmm. the the situations you yes. put your camera in because yeah. if you don't you're not Man. producing an image 100 <laughs> and i also think uh when he opened this door for me it opened a lot of other doors in my life and that's and i think that's where you start to see pr photography on a personal level mm. it's not just a photograph it's like you figuring out what kind of image you want to create and how to do it and there's a process behind it and it's like you know making the right moves it's like a chess game you it's gotta, it's way more intentional very very just like a chess game yep. you have to make the right moves in order to like get to the end you know product of what you actually want it's not about like winning it's literally just about creating something and like following the rules and having that purpose while you're creating something and not only was i getting into film very heavy film started to trickle in my life where i started to look at things different where i started to look at myself different i was like okay who am i to be another photographer and be a very great photographer and have the technical still skills if not, I'm not i'm not a great person it's like that stuff matters more. You can take a photograph of someone, but how do they look in that photo? How do they feel in that photo? Who's the person behind the camera? I how are they it. making that person feel? It all takes place. It all matters. And film, film has kind of been like a teacher, personally. It's like being a young kid. It's like, dude, a lot of us have ADHD, not going to lie. And it's like that stuff slowed me down, slowed me down. And if I didn't slow down, I can't make a great image. Got it. So it, it was, yeah, like you said, a, a teacher in its own right, kind of um, probably even a little therapeutic, I can imagine. It is therapy. But did you, I mean, you must have not thought you were an awful person before film. No, but no one's perfect Sure. at all. We all got stuff to work on. And if you think that you've never done anything wrong in the world or you don't think you need to change at all, then maybe you are the you're like you're hindering yourself you're holding yourself back because we all can become greater regardless mm. of how great we are now yeah 100 percent. no that's i i don't think a lot of people think like you in that way mm. and uh you have to though yeah speaking about this and, mm. and sharing your perspective it it probably helps mm -hmm. so many people beyond just yourself mm -hmm. and 
I, I'm gonna say one thing. It's uh, my friend Irenio. He texts me sometimes in the morning. He'll give me like these little passages, and I'll be like, "Dang, now I got to think about that all day." <laughs> well, there was like there was a point in time where like I had a rut. I wasn't really shooting, and that's like that's how you know I'm not really into into the world at the moment. Like if I'm not shooting, I'm just like my mind's on other things. I'm trying to figure other things out. But I I met this guy one day. He's a he's a painter. His name's Irenio, and um. He's a he's an amazing painter, and I I met him one day, and he was just like painting behind the YMCA downtown Appleton, and I was just walking. I didn't have my camera. He's like, "Yo, what's up, man?" I'm like, "Yo, what's up, dude?" And I just end up sitting there and talking to this guy for like thirty or forty minutes, and it honestly changed my perspective on anything, on everything. And the thing that he told me, he was just like, "Yeah," he's like, "You know, the more you sleep, someone else is, you know." getting better than you or like figuring things out and yes it doesn't matter who's better than who because it's it's really all about the craft and you and yourself yeah it's not about who comes first who comes last but it's like it's like dude like you know don't sleep on yourself and like you know don't like just you know sit in your your sorrow your abyss don't like don't let you being down block you from moving forward and how interesting is that to come from a conversation where you're literally just a person passing by this other person. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a message to that, to have it stick with Mm -hmm. you and for that to come just randomly from you going out into the world. Yeah. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I think that's a weird thing about photography. I felt like I look for meaning in everything. And sometimes that's not the greatest thing though, too. Right. Sometimes you just need to go Mm -hmm. out and see what there is to see. You know, it's a balance. It's a balance. But you also, I think photography made me, it made me look at the world different. It made me love myself more. It made me love being around other people more. Uh, it just makes me want to do cooler shit and be better, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Because it's like life gets better. When you become better, photography becomes better. It's like when you become better, the people around you become better. It's like, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a teacher. It's a sensei. It's therapy. It's honestly everything. It's like, it's just what art is, though. It's like, dude, if I feel like if I didn't have the camera... I don't know what I'd be. Yeah, where where that. would you be? That that stuff is kind of know. dangerous to think about. It's also maybe I'd kind be of an R and B singer or something like that. <laughs> yeah, put on some sick tracks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dude. Um, man, yeah, that's what photography is to me. It's, uh, it's, it's life. A, it's all that in one. It's an incredible story, and I, one I can relate to mm-hmm. very heavily because mm-hmm. you know coming out of a, a place in life where I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do, being able to capture like significant moments Mm -hmm. and certain elements from like my perspective, it makes you feel a certain way. It it really is hard to describe. Man, yeah. And uh, it's it's just such a cool process from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I can only imagine like where you can see your career evolving Mm -hmm. and moving towards if you're this motivated at this young of an age doing this level of work like what's your what's your end goal do you have one or or are you just you know once this project is done like what's next you know oh man um i think after this project is done i think i'm gonna like look at the way how i I think i'm gonna look at how i tell stories differently how i communicate with people um i think i want to extend the project and make a book out of it for sure oh my gosh yeah it's only 25 people right now for the project but like i think i'm gonna extend it and i'm gonna make a book and i think it's gonna be youtube channel as well very cool it's kind of it's honestly kind of like humans of new york but it's like who to say that that one guy in new york owns interviewing people and like you know photographing people it's like that's it's honestly just you documenting human life it's like human you know, existence anyone yeah. can do it but also it's like you know it takes a certain type of person to 100%, do it as well yeah to be interested in other people's like lives despise of what's going on in the world well and to be able to capture it in such a, a beautiful way i mean yeah it's doesn't come easy to some no people. it doesn't you have to learn how to photograph things beautifully well and on top of being able to photograph, I mean, mm. you're a full-fledged videographer who understands mm. the fundamentals. That's a whole different of, ballpark, dude. Oh, absolutely it is. But, I'm only two years in. But you already are understanding the way light mm. works in a, a extremely 
intense mm-hmm. way that when you pick up a, a camera to do video, it, mm-hmm. it's almost second nature. Yeah. Shouts out to Big Bro Keaton, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I got my first videography job. My homie Keaton, we both shoot film together and like he's an actual videographer and he's like, yo, dude, you can use a camera. If you not use a camera, you could figure out Premiere. Oh, absolutely. And it's like the beauty of the ins and outs of knowing how to use a camera. You could literally do anything. You could do audio. You could do video. You could do photography. You could do the editing aspect sitting mm. behind a computer. And that's a whole different ballpark. It seriously After is. Effects, Photoshop, all the Animation, Adobe Suite. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it goes forever, dude. Yeah. The camera literally has changed the way we look at life. Oh, and and the the ease of access mm-hmm. to viewing mm-hmm. the work we create. Visuals are more probably the most important, other than like sound, music as as important for sure. I mean, there's a reason all of these large companies have taken to social media platforms as an advertising tool, dude. <laughs> people, everyone's got a tiktok now i right. bet you nike's got a tiktok i bet there's no way they don't yeah and it's because you know creating video and mm-hmm. giving people a glimpse at what it is they're creating mm-hmm. that's a that's the biggest tool we have yeah. communication i mean that's what it all boils down to hell yeah and i think to go back to the question where you said like what's long go- like term goal it's like bro as long as i like can do whatever i want and it's like with a camera. Like, I think I'm content personally. Like, I think traveling with the camera would definitely probably be my most, like, I wouldn't say in go. Like, that shit better happen quick. <laughs> and I want to do it forever. Have you have you been able to travel much outside of Wisconsin? Um, Yeah. Like, I actually just got my license this year. Hey, um, congrats, man. Yeah, dude, I was, I, was a, I was a biker, walker, skater for so long. That's I was, what's up. Like, I'm an observer. I'm a, I'm a traveler. Like, you know, I'll walk anywhere. I'll bike anywhere. Like, you know, just, like, exploring is, like, my thing. That's so cool. And it's like, dude, if I could combine anything with, like, photography, it'd have to do with, like, traveling. Oh, that's a match whether, made in heaven. <laughs> whether that's, like, going to different countries, helping people, or, like going to different countries and like helping animals and stuff like that like dude i love animals bro i, I love mean, animals you, you see my cat man he's yeah. like a he's my son you hey know? yo big ned where you at son <laughs> he's probably taking a nap so yeah sleep tight little bro <laughs> no but i it's such a uh a cool relation to have and i mean they really go hand in hand mm-hmm. travel and mm-hmm. photography is there anybody specifically that really influences your style of work that you look up to um that you kind of study and take influence from i would say two people right now and i'm gonna pick two people because i'm gonna say near me and like social media wise like someone's name out there and like still alive uh close to me i would probably say my homie that got me into film really yeah, that's so cool dude watching him like because basically he's he's really like my big brother like i watched him move up and everything he did i followed right behind him and i still do it to this day the only thing i probably want to do is that what he's doing right now because that's very complicated what's he doing right he's now? doing wet plates right now uh it's, okay. it's called wet clothing or ambro types he definitely explained it way better but yeah, yeah. if you guys ever get a chance it's silvergraphic.co and he's a wet plate photographer uh he's he lives in well he's based in like the fox valley right now and he, dude he just travels and like does wet plates of people and shit like that can you explain to the audience that may not be familiar what okay. wet plates are so wet plates or wet uh collodion ah fuck what is that say it right uh because i want to i want to say it right on his behalf so he doesn't watch this and be like dude you fucked that up but no i i know a little bit but so basically you're taking chemistry and you're taking photography and you're combining it into one so basically what uh wet plates are is they're literally plates and you can use glass you can use aluminum and you basically you coat it with multiple layers of chemicals and then you put it in a dark bag and then you put it in a holder you take an image you put you pull it out and then you put more chemicals on top of it and there's 
there's so many names for like these chemicals and i'm not gonna say them yeah because, no because I, I wouldn't even this know is very, if you read it you're not a <laughs> you're not a photographer anymore bro like you're like a chemist yeah that yeah. knows how to use a camera it's it's, it's wizardry it yes, truly is you have to read that you literally have to have like an has like a hazard like booklet with you in case anything happens like people probably do people used to blow themselves up back in the day putting chemicals together to figure out ways to put images on like physical like item, items basically isn't that so incredible to even think about yeah like, it's crazy who, it's who came up with that shit man probably <laughs> people who probably figured out how milk was made no i'm just kidding <laughs> no but man it's really just the human race being very curious and figuring things out right that's all that is dude there's, there's got to be a limit at some point because i mean the whole human existence mm -hmm. seems to be just re you know mm -hmm. building on top of everyone wants to make something yeah. everyone wants to be the first to do something and previous I get examples like if you look at our history as a mm -hmm. human race like the the amount of progress we've made in such a short time mm -hmm. like if i look into the future and think of mm -hmm. what tools they're using to mm -hmm. capture images and videos mm -hmm. even 25 years from mm -hmm. now i can't even fathom the technology we'll have mm -hmm. and dude i was just talking to someone else about that the other day like that's our purpose as the human race we're literally supposed to evolve regardless so like let's say your father 20 30 years ago yes he's probably a smart man he made stuff work but the goal is is for you to be smarter than your dad so you can do the same thing for your children. Your, your children are supposed to be smarter than you. We literally need the future to evolve in order to be, to be better. Right. It's like, it's like it's only right. That's what we're doing. It's like it always evolves regardless of what we're doing. Yeah, and we, we sure mm -hmm. as hell better not devolve. Cause... Yeah, well, and that's the thing, though. It can We can devolve. We yeah. have been devolving. Yeah, I would agree. We've slowed down. We've, we've definitely slowed down. We can look at the world now, dude, and like... I mean, I'm not going to bring in politics because it's more than politics. It's how we treat each other as human beings. Mm. We talk about love and religion all the time. But, you know, we also like hurt other people. So it's like we have to get our own stuff together before we try to evolve in the world. Which is why things that you and I do, I think, mm -hmm. are so important mm -hmm. because the more connection and the more understanding and the more learning you can mm -hmm. do, it, it only... It, it's only going to create something mm -hmm. better you know yeah the, it's like dude what's another camera man if our minds aren't like the most important thing about it right it's like know how to use a camera and know how to use these softwares but also like wh who are you outside of that and what could you teach somebody right yeah i yeah it, incredible mm -hmm. can uh, you you mentioned starting youtube and mm -hmm. wanting to start a, a venture there have you done any youtube videos Oh, yeah, I edited probably, yeah, well, we slowed down recently because we used to, like, put out seven videos a week no at way. this company I used to work okay. at. I'm probably not going to talk too much about it, but, oh, that's yeah, fine. like, I work at this company where we're, like, we edit videos, like, all, we used to edit videos probably, like, all the time, and now we're down. Got like, it. But yeah. did you do it personally? Uh, My older homie, Keaton, tried to, actually, yes, Um, my friend, Keaton, uh, we started he started a film photography YouTube, and it's called Metal Fingers. Cool. And basically, it's literally just us shooting film and just, like, us shooting different types of cameras, different stocks of film, us going places and shooting film, oh, just literally yeah. experiencing the world through film. Yeah, I love that. I, that style of video is such a, a cool niche on mm -hmm. YouTube, and there is a pretty, like, mm -hmm. devote following it's to, cool to watch. the style of videos. It's Absolutely. like, not only do you like film, but it's people who who do like film just yeah. like you, but also they're going other places and they're in other places and they're shooting film. It's a whole community. It just makes you want to do it more. Yeah, I can totally see you slotting in. Nice little hub. Yeah, easily mm -hmm. with with that whole community. Dude, yeah. and that's the thing. It's like I'm I'm always trying to like influence people to like pick up film. Yeah, I guess it's expensive right now and that's why i said full circle. I've kind of got back into digital a little bit. Oh gosh, yeah. I I wanted I've I've never really shot film in my life. I've always wanted to. There's always time. There, oh, I will in the future. There's no no way I get to the end of my life without mm -hmm. shooting film. Man. However, at this point in time, you're right, dude. It is mm -hmm. stupid expensive. It really is mm -hmm. a hard hobby to get into because yeah. you need A, B, C, D, Facts. E f and g to even get yeah. started all, all the all the necessary stuff man i've definitely put a lot of 
my money into like film work but it's it's paid off it's paying off and it's probably gonna like continue to pay off a lot more it's a huge I mean, investment yeah 100 percent. and yeah money is not the biggest form of why i do this and yes there is and you know a currency aspect of it but i don't really care about the money way too much i think the feeling that i get from like shooting a negative taking it home developing it drinking a bottle of wine or something yeah. just chilling listening to some john mayer you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh hell yeah. there's other music out there <laughs> but man you know we up on that john mayer you know what i'm saying shout out john uh <laughs> Yeah, just like the process. And then seeing how people react yeah, to it, man. I'm sure it gives you a ton of gratification. Man. And the the feeling while shooting it, the feeling while developing it, the feeling while scanning it and just sitting in front of your computer chilling or something. There's so many different it keeps you out of trouble too, man. It's oh like, there's a it's a very timely process. I yeah, mean it's it not something you can rush mm -hmm. and it's sure as hell not yeah. something you can do like in a matter of you know, say you have half an hour in the day, that's not enough time. And this may sound cliche, photography saved my life. That's for damn sure. Really? Hell yeah, man. It's like, dude, the dude, the the things I probably like would have found interesting. It's like being a young kid growing up. It's mm. like we live in Wisconsin too. It's like all we do is like drink. Yeah. Sorry. That's <laughs> yeah, it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. And it's no, like building... I'm, not a, I'm not a heavy drinker, but like, you, you enjoy one from time to time. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. But there is such that culture here. Yeah. And, we fall uh, into it so easily. You you really can. And uh, creating other outlets yes. to be able to yep. uh, take advantage of instead yeah, of dude. those things. Like we need way, way less bars and way more creative spaces. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> it's like there's some galleries that would like maybe a wine bar in it or something or like game stores or something. Give people things to do. Yeah. And, Definitely. and you can combine the two and, you know, mm -hmm. maybe make something cool happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we need... We need more of those creative mm -hmm. spaces like those galleries yeah, that, dude, that you're um, uh, getting there's involved a, with. Yeah, 100%. And there's a uh, community darkroom that they just built in Appleton. Really? Yeah, probably probably the first community darkroom in the Fox. Oh, other than like colleges and stuff right, like that. Because right. only those kids have like access to that yeah. stuff. But and like high dude, schools are the same way. Yeah, dude, literally like that. Those are the things that we should implement more. Whether it's like kids who love sports kids who love photography kids who love video games right just like being like having places where people can like intellectually get together as a group and learn more about that one thing mm. and that's what i've kind of learned that this uh this is place that they just bought a church and it's called photo op and it's not up yet but it's going to be up soon and the guys that like run their that place it's like you know different like you know they got different backgrounds and they have made a living from using cameras it's like you know they do production work they film videos they edit videos one does like still frame work one's like a crazy printer and this guy's like 70 and he's literally only worked in dark rooms his whole life oh, that's so cool. he's his whole life and this is random pretty funny i interviewed him and literally he told me that he was working at a dark room trying to start another dark room and then he quit everything and just went back to work at another dark room. <laughs> so that's how important <laughs> photography was to that guy. Yeah, he uh, tried to make his own lane. That didn't happen, but he still found himself. Still felt because he's still so in love with it, though. That's what that means, dude. I, I can't imagine the amount of pure knowledge that guy has yeah. in just photography. Yeah, you watched me develop film the other day and he yelled at me. That's how you know I don't know enough yet. <laughs> And I and a lot of people think I know a lot, but I'm just like, dude, I think you know a ton, man. Dude, nah, this is literally just the top, bro. This is just just the tip of the iceberg, man. There's so many layers. Oh, goodness. anything you do, there's layers. There's always layers, dude. It never stops. Uh, yeah, I am so excited just to to watch you and uh, continue to see you grow and develop your craft because I appreciate it. It's uh, it's already an insane product damn man <laughs> i do not feel that way about my work i feel like it'd be so much better i think as artists nobody ever truly feels that way about you gotta their be work. Your biggest critic right but from an outsider's perspective like we we don't give ourselves enough nah, credit we don't i'm pretty sure you don't too man <laughs> oh, you're amazing man not. this thank podcast you. is sick thank you i hope you get a lot more people on here i i certainly will it's uh 
I always say like the most well-known podcasts, like they don't really see audiences until like mm-hmm. episode 300. Nah, dude. It's <laughs> like we watch podcasts all over the world. Dude, when COVID happened, podcasts were still are the shit. Oh, absolutely. Everybody and their moms have yeah. podcasts. Yeah. And I think it's the greatest thing because I think COVID literally taught people how to communicate. It taught people to slow down. Hell too. yeah. There, there was too much going mm-hmm. on and, and people need to take more time just Hell to yeah. kind of relax and observe yeah, man. because they're definitely not doing enough of it yeah man i think we were very so we were very zoomed in on things in the world even like when it came to news like the things that we were focusing on and i think we got a chance to kind of like drop everything yeah <laughs> drop everything and kind of zoom out and look at everything seeing what everyone else is going through like oh this is happening over here oh this is happening over here it's like hey we should figure this out first too it's like i think we're getting back to being natural human beings we're uh we are we're very like we're creatures that need to be together we're animals at the end of the day it's like we need to be around other human beings but i think over time we've made it very cool to be like individualists and like doing our own thing not talking to people 100 percent home every night not talking to anyone not texting anyone just literally being your own person and being in your own world and as great as that may feel it's not natural for us. Oh, absolutely we not. Need, we need to talk. We need to be in spaces where people are continuously like exchanging knowledge and stuff like that. That's probably why evolution has slowed down. Probably. And I think there's something in this generation that's looking at our parents and our grandparents and seeing what they've mm-hmm. done and accomplished, but wanting something very different. 100%. You know, they're we have this huge lack of connection with a ton of different like industries in our life, whether it's, you know, our connection with food or our connection with nature. Like we are very untapped. Yeah. We have, we have grown so far away from that. We got to tap back into it, man. Absolutely. And I think that's something, you know, the generations before us have not neglected, but just maybe overlooked. And Mm -hmm. there's something with, um, at least people in our age group that are really desiring more, yeah. you know, yeah, we, we look like, at pollution yes. and I get so pissed off. Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's like, dude, we're, we were literally put on this earth to take care of it. Right. That's why so many of us were like earth's little workers. Right. And but I, we're, we're not taking care of her. Yeah. So. And I know there are people within our generation mm-hmm. that don't feel that way but of course there are always mm. going to be those people but it takes a group though yeah it absolutely. definitely takes a group and uh you know in that way like creating information and being able to share perspectives and, mm. and knowledge is is should only make that better too mm. just these little conversations man like you taught me something today and i probably taught you something today and we literally like separate and then we go give it to other people yep we influence others and we get influenced that's the biggest the biggest form of human greatness have you always been this like conscious sponge yeah yeah dude i had no business reading certain books when i was like 13 (laughs) okay so you were definitely like a bookworm yeah man i was reading books that are called like the flower of life and i'm like 13 and i'm like what dolphins have great memories that's crazy (laughs) and i'm just like i don't know what this means so i'm gonna put this down and then i'll pick it back up later that's that's crazy yeah uh so you were you uh, pretty good in school uh hell no no (laughs) my mom was a teacher my whole life so i think i became very conscious of how the real world worked very quick and that wasn't the greatest for me interesting because uh i was very i would say i was a kid that didn't communicate a lot i was very i wouldn't say i was angry all the time but i was very like snappy frustrated But also, like, you know, you got to think about where I come from. It's like I come from the inner city of Milwaukee where communication isn't the first reaction when we, like, talk to a person. It's like you look at a person the wrong way and things may turn out a great way or maybe not so great. But it's like, you know, things are changing. And it's like it's not that way everywhere there. But it's like we um, I I don't want to speak for everyone, but we are a very we're very sensitive people, man. So, like. People have to watch the way that they approach us because, you know, we've been we've been put through certain situations and we haven't we weren't able to get help after 
all of the trauma that we gained from a lot of that stuff. And I think we just like kind of had to like live in it and like kind of like deal with it and like not. And that's something else that I've definitely learned is like a younger black kid. It's like I have to learn how to. I have to learn how to deal with my emotions and articulate myself and not articulate myself for other people, but for myself, though. Mm. because it's like dude i need to be comfortable with myself because for so long we've been made uncomfortable we've always had to adapt for other people we're chameleons we've definitely always had to adapt and i don't mean to like get super deep into like no no but it, like it's, it's, it's a the truth man totally how, different yeah, perspective yeah, than man. i think most people get yeah man it's like me and you totally grew up different as children but where we also have been able to grow up to a certain place where we're literally thinking the same. Exactly. We should be able to start out that way. Children don't, they're not born to hate other people at all. It's taught. Not at all. Uh, yeah, hate is taught. Yeah. Love is literally the only thing. You are literally built and made with love. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah, so to like kind of get off of that topic, just yeah, man, I've always had to like, I've always like, wanted to better myself because i saw where i came from and i feel like if i kept myself indulged in those things then i don't think my future would have been as bright personally yeah it, it's it's always a you're a creature of your own environment mm -hmm. so there's absolutely some yeah. truth there and and my own and i'm a and i'll leave it at this and on my own i would i would for like coming from me i would say how i kind of came up and how I was able to get the resources and move to a Fox Valley. And like, I was able to experiment the world. I was able to like, kind of experience like uh, other people outside of where I came from. I was able to get a different viewpoint of the world. I was able to get my hands on more things that people where I come from can't get that kind of stuff. Do you think that's a reason why you're so drawn to photography and mm -hmm. videography? Yeah. Just because you can share Truth your, of the world. Yeah, your perspective yeah. and how you look at things. More importantly, I want to be able to give those resources back to kids like where I come from. Just like give, I want them to not have to go through the stuff that we had to go through. Dude, when we were born in 2000s, we didn't really have to go through crazy stuff like, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and shit. But I definitely want shit to be better for people where I come from. I want to give, I want all places to have resources. I don't want resources to be majorly spreaded around in only certain areas. I want yeah. everybody to get that, that perfect peanut butter thin spread each <laughs> side of the bread bro gets all of it evenly man. i'm with it man everybody deserves it dude and i think that was that was the most important thing growing up for sure like knowing where you came from knowing like you know you went through trauma and you had shit going on but you couldn't sit in it though because if you sat in it it would just like the long-term effects you've already seen it oh, especially yeah. with like fathers uncles all that kind of stuff mm. so just really like breaking those curses man it's it's cool um uh, are you a fan of kendrick lamar at all <laughs> dude don't get me started bro my mind literally probably comes from that man like Hell watching yes. him okay. evolve from a from a kid that comes from compton yeah and the newer album where he talks about trauma that's what and i like yep. it like his father was in his life but if fa his father wasn't mentally there mm. it's like that dude Kendrick is a beast, dog. Okay. I'm getting I, a little bit too hype, but bro. No, I, I felt... Dude. Because, yeah, with his latest album, mm -hmm. he's speaking on a lot of things mm -hmm. you're speaking on now, which yeah. is incredibly yeah. important. It's like, for, oh, I don't need therapy. Nah, everybody does. Right, right. Everybody does, bro. And yeah. that doesn't mean like going to an office and signing some papers. It's different for everybody. This is therapy. You yeah. got to talk to someone, man. Talk to people about your problems. Just put that stuff out on the table. I completely agree. I, I think therapy is always like, everybody always thinks about it as like mm -hmm. the person laying, mm -hmm. a person sitting in a chair and a person laying on the couch, yeah. like getting talked to. It, mm -hmm. it can be gardening. It yeah. can be doing a podcast it can be shooting film yeah like, man and I, I don't think enough people understand that mm -hmm. like when what you it truly means to put yourself in a peaceful place right and how your body feels when you're in it and how to be able to mm -hmm. um understand the way you're feeling mm -hmm. and to uh, comprehend things that have yeah. happened to you mm -hmm. um 
it, it happens differently for everybody. Yeah. And what if you didn't have to do what you love in order to felt like that? What if you felt like that just waking up in the morning? Oh. How better off the world would be, dude? I can't even imagine. Dude, man. We just need more love. People need more love and hugs and forehead kisses and stuff. <laughs> not everybody. Not, yeah, not everybody. But the the good ones. <laughs> yeah, man. We got we got to spread love. So out, outside of... Uh, Outside of your work, outside of photography, outside of Uh-oh. everything else, <laughs> I, I've asked this question more than a few times. What do you enjoy doing in your downtime when, when there's nothing going on? You don't have to worry about a thing uh, and you're not taking photos because I know that's probably a majority of it. But, yeah, it's uh, probably like 98.9%. <laughs> okay, okay. What's that other uh, one point? Uh, two percent man music is very inspirational it's like just back to the kendrick lamar thing yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the heart part two where he, he interviews the guy and he's like he's like what what keeps you here every day he's like ah uh, i thought about ending it a couple times but music definitely keeps me here and i was just like damn i've never like felt that way but like dude music does that for you bro music it makes things okay yeah it unlocks a, a certain part mm -hmm. in the human soul dude just as it, just as important as air music is just as important i mean you could live without it but you'd be one miserable person without music right you need vibration man what's uh, you you mentioned um who did you mention earlier in this podcast um, what does he do uh he she singer uh, um male singer uh oh how i said if i didn't do photography i'd like be an r&b singer or something like that no i uh, i forget no you're well, good what's, you're what's good, your you're favorite good. artist uh, what's my favorite artist currently. uh currently uh does it uh is does it have to be like genre specific no no genre specific mm. It's a hard question. Nah. I, don't, I don't even know if I could answer it right now. Yeah, there's so much music. <laughs> there really is. There's so much music. It's like a library. It's like a dictionary. You can you can never ever favorite. But Kendrick's up there, dude. Kendrick has always been, and that's what I mean about like being a reference from like where you come from. Mm. It's like from where I come from. It's like, dude, it would have been great to like have like somebody like older than me that's done it in the world and like actually like you know made things work for themselves so i can follow that path or like like watch someone yeah just having them. a mentor yeah. to kind of well there is one person pretty sure the world knows him and if you don't you're gonna figure out who he is uh kenny hoopla, kenny oh, hoopla. dude kenny hoopla is uh he's definitely like a, a reference an older brother figure it's like a kid being from the fox valley and then literally just like believing in yourself so much that the shit literally just like switches like that for you and it, it literally shows you like how what you can do for yourself when you put your passion and your love and in like into one thing and it could literally work like that when well, you start believing in yourself yeah man yeah kenny hooper for sure that's a that that would i would definitely say like closer to me probably my favorite artist right now Outside of like anyone closer than me, Kendrick Lamar, Kenny's. Dude, he uh he released a song or not a song. He released a video with Spotify, mm -hmm. um, in the last few days, mm -hmm. and he's literally he dropped the album mm -hmm. and literally went out of the country. Yeah, left with his the phone. Yes, that's what I call peace. And he he just disconnected mm -hmm. from everything. That album sounded like he was at peace and he was having fun and he was finally figuring out what truly makes him happy. Right, and he realized he didn't need to mm -hmm. worry about whatever mm -hmm. what everybody else thought about his work. He I just, think he yeah one hundred percent. I think he and I apologize for cutting you oh, off. Oh, you're but good. I think he finally figured out what it truly means to be real outside of how real he already was seriously it's like the outside of him his outer world like everything about him was real like you know his homies looked at him real like i'm pretty sure like the ladies around him and his mother looked at him as like a real person but like on the inner core i think he like i think everyone definitely thinks of themselves as not the best we're our biggest critics mm. and i think he like did it to on a whole different level 
there was a line on there and i'm not going to talk about the kendrick and drake beef it's weird I, I think those are both great. Like they're two of the greatest artists of all time that we have right now. Completely they're both amazing. Yeah. Drake makes me want to dance. <laughs> Kendrick makes me want to like cry, progress, <laughs> and cry, and like you know become great in the world. Yeah, it's like they do great things. But dude, there was a line in there where he talked about how he had. He said uh, when Drake get back, got back with Kanye because Kanye is kind of like the goat to everybody mm-hmm. and like he saw someone he believed in and he loved and he thought was great kind of like you know be in inter, like he intermingled with someone that he didn't really was a, he wasn't really a fan of and instead of like being the guy that was like ah dude like ah freak both of them or whatever like you know that fuck both of them or whatever but like he was just like nah dude like i got some stuff to deal with bro and i shouldn't be looking at people like that or thinking that way about someone yeah he's like i i don't understand Mm -hmm. the way that happened yes but like i shouldn't let that affect me right i should definitely think about those things different and that's how i look at the world yeah it's like as as very quick as we are to blame things on other people and how we do things i think we should look inside first you don't find anything cool look on the outside next but don't forget to look on the inside first before you like start like you know festering up these like ideas this anger sadness all that stuff like the stress you inflict on yourself words slip by man yeah it's uh almost Mm -hmm. there's um, more important lyrics but yeah i just thought that was very like humble very like real super humble super real and almost in a sense um like it's his whole philosophy Mm -hmm. seemed to have shifted in Mm -hmm. such a a new and refreshing way Mm -hmm. that transferred directly to his music Mm -hmm. and his personality man and and to be able to do that um in, in such a way that he's not putting down mm-hmm. anybody else or his even previous work mm-hmm. or he's just recognizing and going through it mm-hmm. and experiencing it. Yep. And it's a, such a powerful message. Man. And I think Kendrick's career is like something that everybody could look at. I think long term, I think if I want to follow anyone's path, it'd be Kendrick, Kendrick's path for sure. It's like be a young 23 year old kid and have the world on your back. And also learn yourself so much to the point where you're like all right cool i've done my thing let me influence other people and give other people that spotlight and that's exactly what he's doing now and to be able to find success too because Mm -hmm. you know at the end of the day you want your work to be seen by as many people as possible Mm -hmm. i mean that's the goal you want to share Mm -hmm. your experience with as many people that will listen Mm -hmm. or look or experience and Mm -hmm. uh i mean that's the goal for me whenever i step in front of a camera or behind a camera Mm -hmm. i just want to create something that other people enjoy and can learn from and experience in a a brand new way that maybe gets them thinking in a different light and uh it's it's hard to grab people's attention Mm -hmm. but once you do and once you're Mm -hmm. You know, you don't always want to search for that. That's no. that shouldn't be your the your end. Thing. The yeah. first thing, you know, you always want to produce something that's very meaningful to you and something mm-hmm. you love. Yeah, and that will come. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, it's also uh, sort of a tool to judge how well you're doing something. Mm-hmm. Dude, we could talk Kendrick all day, but bro, <laughs> man, I learned so much from him. Just how not even the music, but how he moves as an artist, like his interviews interviews are the most important thing to me i feel like interviews ex- they don't not exploit but i think they showcase a true person their vibration what they say they like they mean uh i would say like kendrick and like nipsey hustle like mm. i mean art rest in peace to him too uh but man uh those guys who or anyone not just guys but like there's amazing women out there there's people out there who leave great information behind and like i think we should look more into it because especially when they're older than us too it's like they've been through the world take that information chew it up and then spit it back out as your own yeah i i think you're doing a great job of that too is Mm -hmm. your understanding and um respect to our elders Mm -hmm. and 
the the wealth of knowledge that they do mm-hmm. possess to be able to mm-hmm. learn from them because Where's i feel like uh yeah a ton of people just write write older generations off and older people off because they're Hell like ah yeah. oh, what do they know like, that, yeah that's so that's our problem now man that's the opposite of what the we bridge should, be should never be burned the yeah. bridge should always be very strong and people should be able to cross over it and cross back over it whenever they need to yeah. if the elder needs something from the youth they should be able to do that if the youth needs the elders they should be able to do that yeah we and should I, be able to like you know we should be able to, to lean on each other when needed to you're you're already leading by example i feel like got to and And, uh, that's just other people leading and me following them but mm -hmm. also learning to lead and not follow yeah but it it, it's uh, again it's your Mm self-awareness and your ability to recognize Mm -hmm. and understand the world as you take it it's such a refreshing and amazing Mm -hmm. viewpoint and outlook and i i truly hope you you (laughs) take that to like insane level man and people as much as we talk about stuff you got to be able to do it don't just talk about things yeah no i'm learning that as well so. it, it's i always compare this podcast to like going to the gym or doing mm. something in Hell a routinely yeah, basis it's Dude, like it's yeah. not going to come mm-hmm. from just sitting on a couch no now the ironic part is we can we're sit on sitting couches, couches but but something else better be moving and yeah, better be that brain exactly you mm. you always have to just keep at something Mm -hmm. and uh stimulate your mind man right and and don't get um turned off if things stop going your way just work Mm -hmm. a little harder yeah work with the world yeah you can't control it work with it really can't i dude it has been incredible Mm -hmm. to sit down with you we could talk all night but i know we got things to do (laughs) places to be but it's all right we we are just under an hour but i i to, to kind of slow things down and, and bring things to a closing um it has been so cool and so fascinating i this is the first time we're, we're meeting yeah literally in i feel like i've met you before or something right. you've been in my dreams or some shit for real yeah. but but to be able to understand your perspective and your outlook and the way you treat photography and the way you're creating this amazing project Mm -hmm. it it just resonates on a whole different level Mm -hmm. and uh i i cannot thank you enough for reaching out and uh and starting that conversation Mm -hmm. and um, this is an honor uh, i don't deserve to be here no you you definitely do this is the right place the right time for both of us i think Dude, definitely. Because uh, you have an amazing career ahead of you, and mm-hmm. I, uh, I for both of us, for sure. I absolutely, I, I need to get you on again, and we need to talk some more. Dude, because... yeah, dude. If you want to get like a second person, where there's like a group of us or something. Oh yeah. It's like if you need help getting some more mics, I don't know if you have extra. No, I, I, dude, I'm fully equipped to do four people. Oh shucks, uh, now. So, dude, absolutely. Dude, let's do it. Maybe play some video games and screen share it at the yep. same time. Let's, yep. let's let's make some, bro. Yeah, I'm down, man. For I sure. Am, uh, well, I appreciate you for having me, man. I yeah, appreciate yeah. it so where, much. Where can people find your stuff? Um, um, what's the easiest way to do that? Uh, I, I just use my I use my middle name, my last name, Romero Nance. So if you ever like want to find a website, uh, Romero Nance dot com. Uh, Instagram Romero Nance, Twitter Romero Nance. Uh, I haven't changed my Facebook, but <laughs> Facebooks are for the old people and just me getting in contact with like all my elders who wants to tell yeah, me about yeah. what they made for Thanksgiving. So yeah. yeah, no Facebook. Well, I have a Facebook, but just use the other stuff. Right. Cool. And when do you know when the project is uh, going to start? Um, uh, what's the, the right the, word? Everything, all the, everything's due. Like, so like the photographs, the audios, the prints, everything's due by August 28th. So I'm hoping to like have everything like prepared and start to roll out as soon as September hits, dude. Sweet. Yes. You definitely let me know the second, uh, that starts happening. Yes. And, uh, I'll be there, man. I'm hoping to have a gallery or something, but we'll figure it out. Shit's happening so fast and great things are happening. So like You are moving at an incredible pace. Yeah. I need to slow I mean, down. Just before this, he was interviewing somebody yeah, completely literally, different. Literally. And, and I uh, and I I was a little late. Please don't be mad oh, at me. No. So I hit that freeway and hit a hundred, baby, and we made it. You know what I'm saying? I told him he shouldn't have done that, but <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I appreciate the urgency. Um, but no, dude, you're, you're hustling so hard. And, Got to, uh, bro. So, so much excited bro. so much out there. <laughs> i'm excited to see this interview i'm excited to see the comments i'm a weird yeah. youtube person i'm like ah what did they say yeah no it, it's always fun seeing any interaction so mm-hmm. if you guys love my work and if you guys love his work like mm-hmm. the best thing you can do is interact with us mm-hmm. and uh follow us like our stuff comment yes. on our stuff follow this place we need to get we need to get this place booming bro we need some more people on this podcast we dog. will we will in time my friend for in sure time. and shouts out to big ned you know what i'm saying shouts out ned hey say something ned all right yep, cool thanks yep, ned yep, yep. <laughs> good looking my boy <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming out man uh i'm gonna send us out here peace out that was sick. <laughs> I've never done that before. Dude, it's it's so fun. Man. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs>